<laughs> Hello men. This is Ryan. And I am here. <laughs> With a message for you. For all men. We live in a time where it can be very confusing to be a man. So many mixed messages from the media, from the people around us of what it means to be a man. You know, be sensitive, be strong, <laughs> give us space, take care of us. What does it mean to be a man? <laughs> Well, one word always rings true when it comes to what it means to be a man, and that is authenticity. Ultimately, the path to being your fullest as a man and rounding out your masculine energy is about being authentic because it is built into you. That's the beauty of this journey. You don't have to try to be anything. Okay, the way that this world works right now is in a mental state. Everybody's in their heads. And everybody's trying to be what they think that they should be. Okay, I've been to men's conferences. I've been leading a men's group for the last three years. I know the state that most men exist in and I existed in it in myself until I woke up and started to become a real man. <laughs> and when I say real man, I mean the man that is seated within each of our hearts. There's no one right way to be a man. There's no person out there who's the prime example of what it means to be a man and then copy that person. Uh-uh-uh. That's not how it works. <laughs> I saw it in my time that I spent growing my businesses. <laughs> and I'll tell you a story of how it really became obvious to me of what's going on in this, particularly in American society. Okay, everybody's in their heads and everybody's mental. So everybody's looking around and trying to figure out what they need to do in order to be happy. And as a man, you crave intimacy with women. You crave connection, okay? You crave the feeling of being fulfilled and living your purpose. And so most men are looking around saying, I want that and I want it bad. And I've worked with men who come in and they say, I want to be fulfilled. How do I do it, Ryan? Okay, and you can do it. That's why I have so much hope. That's why I have so much confidence because I've done it myself and I've helped other men achieve it as well. And you can do it. So what I saw back when I was growing my businesses was that in the business world, of course, it's all about profit. And so what the big corporations do is they look around and they see which companies are succeeding and making a lot of profit. And then they just try to mimic that and they try to copy that. Okay, it's kind of like religion. That's what religion is really, is somebody, some awesome person was, was doing their thing and people come around them and go, whoa, this person's special. And so they start to do the things that that person's doing, thinking that that will get them their fulfillment and their inner peace and that that will help them become the person that they know on some level that they can be. <laughs> but that ain't how it works. Whenever we try to copy something else, it's always inauthentic and it just leads to staleness and stagnation, okay? So what most people in the business world do is, like I say, they look around and who's kicking ass? Oh, Steve Jobs is kicking ass. Let's do everything Steve Jobs did. Or, you know, um, whoever is kicking ass. And let's do what they're doing. Whatever, you know, there's always like the new hot person. Okay, and back in the 80s, there was a guy named Daniel Goleman. And what he did is he studied the top leaders in business. And I believe he's a psychologist or coming from that point of view, you know, kind of he trying to take a very neutral approach to look at these great leaders in business that were getting results. And his goal was to figure out what these people shared, what thing about them made them special. And what he found was what he coined a term called emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. So IQ had always been the thing that people in society had looked at as being so valuable. You know, what your IQ is. I know when I was growing up as a little kid, you know, it was always this big deal. Like, what's your IQ? And, and it was such this, this thing that kind of um, determined who, you know, which kids were bound for success and which kids, you know, should be put in the middle. 
rung, and, and you know it, we, we were we were ranked by our IQs essentially. And then Daniel Goldman came along and said, actually, the leaders that are kicking ass in business and really getting the best results are leaders who have EQ, emotional intelligence. And what he saw is that these were people who could connect with other people and that they could sympathize with other people and that they could um, bond with other people. And so when they then led and they inspired other people, it was with connection. And so people wanted to work hard for them. People wanted to get results for them. Just like any great coach has to connect with his players or her players in order for the players to really find that deepest place within themselves where they can uh, dig down deep and find more than they ever knew that they had and get results that they never thought that they could get. Okay, and so Goldman published these results and the whole business world went crazy because they saw, wow, these leaders with high EQs are getting the results. So what did they do? They started to try to copy those leaders. So that's when all these business books came out about how to have higher emotional intelligence and leadership around business really started to change from being about you know smarts and IQ to being about leadership and people and developing teams and things like that. Okay, but the same, 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 same patterns have happened is that it's all become stale, it's all stayed in the head. Because here's the thing, no matter how hard you try, no matter how many books you read, no matter how many conferences you go to, no matter how many changes you make in yourself, and I've been there, I went through this path, I did it. No matter how much you try to copy what's out there, it will never bring you the peace and the connection and the confidence and the awesomeness that you know is in you and all the things that you want. Okay, connection with women, deep, intimate, meaningful relationships with women, with male friends, okay, with everyone around you and, and with your business, with whatever you're doing in life. The results that you want come through finding and being your authentic self, your true and fullest expression of who you are. Because just like all the great rock stars in history, Okay, all the great rock stars, you name the, the best ones, the Beatles, Kurt Cobain, Madonna, Jimi Hendrix, you know, all the best ones were because they were people who were tuned in to their truest expression and they did what always felt right to them and they never compromised. They didn't compromise even when people with money came around or even people with other interests came around and made them offers and said, hey, you know, if you just change your message this way a little bit, we'll give you some more money, you know, and they tried to alter them and change them. And people like Kurt Cobain, who I love and I see, you know, he's such a young guy and he stayed true and it, it works and that's why they, they rise to fame and rock and roll like Radiohead. It's my favorite band, Tom York, who's the lead singer. He stays true to himself through and through and through and that's why Radiohead has such an amazing long career that will just go as long as they want to create music because people topple over when they start to compromise on themselves. When they do it to try to make the quick buck or to try to, to reach fame or reach fortune by giving away pieces of themselves. And so becoming the man that you were destined to be is all about going inward, going inward and start to living from the true place within you, speaking your truth, standing up for what you believe is right, okay? And then as you do that more and more and more and feeling your feelings and being honest about your emotions. When you're sad, be okay with being sad. When you're angry, it's okay to say, you know, I'm angry. When you're happy, when you're joyful, to celebrate. It's like letting all of the restrictions off of your emotional state so that you can become fully dynamic. And you, as a unique individual, as a unique man, with beautiful masculine energy flowing through your body, okay, it will become rounded out as you become more and more and more and more comfortable expressing yourself fully and honestly. And what happens as you do that is, sure, you develop strength, and you have power and you can stand up for people who need to be stood up for and stand up for yourself. But also as you become comfortable in that, as you become comfortable with your strength, what happens is the beautiful feminine aspects of us come to life as well. And we no longer are hiding behind 
a phony facade, a phony smile. You know, there's so many men out there who are living behind this customer service, inauthentic smile. And they mean well, they're trying their hardest, and maybe that's you, you know, working for these big corporations and trying to work your way up the ladder and you're doing your best, but you just know, like, it's not your vision. And you're doing all these things to help make other people money, hoping that it will eventually benefit you. But wherever you are right now in your journey, I'm here to invite you to take a breath and pause and realize that as the sooner you start to go inward and express authentically what is you in each and every situation, that that is the sooner that you will start to live your dreams and that you will start to come alive and that your relationships with women will start to be better and that your heart will open and you will start to have the ability to connect more and more and more and guess what? That's how emotional intelligence is really developed. It's developed through going inward and opening up your heart and being true and real and authentic and raw. Because as you grow through that and as you move through that and you drop the bullshit and you drop the phony stuff and you stop trying to pretend to be something that you're not and you stop avoiding conflict and you learn to work through conflict and you just learn to be okay with yourself and to set and live your boundaries, okay? And to deal with the criticism of other people and to not be affected by it and to not be pushed and pulled on by all of the expectations of people around you, but to learn to stand up on your own two feet as a man and your heart just opens and you become rounded out and it is where all of the magic happens. <laughs> Strength and tenderness. Be strong, be tender. And as you start to be that with yourself and give yourself permission to feel your feelings freely and to not have to try to be strong when you're not feeling strong or to, to, to not try to be nice when you're not feeling nice. Authenticity is the path. It's the path and you have a unique man that's within you that as you express yourself, it's going to come alive and it's going to express itself in a unique way that doesn't look like me, that doesn't look like the other guys, but it looks like you and it's strong and it's tender. And that's a real man. Strength when strength is needed and knowing when strength is needed because naturally as you tune into your intuition, which is allowing silence and resting into the feelings in your body to birth insights. Insights, see, they're in here, they're insights. They're insights, they're sights of the future because as you rest and relax into your body and feel your feelings and develop patience in doing that, the strength comes up and then you just know when to act with ferocity and when to act with calmness and serenity and connection because you can express from a full range of dynamics when your heart is open. And there's no right or wrong because you're the judge of what's right or wrong for you. No one else could tell you what's right or wrong. Okay, sure, you can always take other people's input if and when you want to, but at the end of the day, you do what you feel is right for you. And you encourage those around you by living it to do the same thing. And that's what a leader does. A leader leads by leading by being, by being strong and tender and real. Not trying to copy other things, not trying to put on a facade, not trying to you know, do the things that will get the results that the book says or that the conference says, but going inward and feeling those feelings and releasing those old pent up, bottled up emotions that deserve to be set free just like you because you deserve freedom. You deserve everything that your heart desires and it will come as you relax and allow yourself to be birthed out anew because you <laughs> are light through and through, no matter what anyone has ever told you, no matter who I'm talking to right now, you, you, you are full of beauty and awesomeness and strength in your own way. And you have talents beyond what you even know. You have abilities beyond what you've ever fathomed. And it's, it's in your heart waiting to birth out. So wherever you are in your own personal journey, I'm here to say, as a fellow man, you can do it. We can do it together. I'm here to support you by telling you to be you. <laughs> yeah! Woo! All right. I love you, and I'm not afraid to say it.
You are awesome. <laughs> it's exciting! The future is bright and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And if you're watching this video, it's because your future is about to get lit on fire. And I look forward to meeting you in that fire. See you there.